hmm, 10 years in a decade and 10 items in each of these lists. Coincidence? Well, pretty much, yeah. One and all, and welcome back to Tom's Hit Parade, continuing my end of the decade spectacular ish, my week long salute to my favorite music of the 2010s. Yes, this was originally going to be just a one shot video, just one list, my 100 favorite albums of the decade, but then I decided, hey, since I go all out and do a whole week's worth of videos for my year end spectacular ish, why not do it for the decade as well? Because yeah, it only comes along once every 10 years, right? So I figured I'd go all out, and uh, well, if you like lists, this video is for you, because I'm not going to give you just one. I'm not going to give you two, but I'm going to give you three lists in this video. Uh, I decided I would devote this video to the uh, fringe categories, I guess you'd say, of my music collection. I will be talking about my 10 favorite compilations and my 10 favorite soundtracks of the 2010s uh, in just a few minutes. But first of all, I'm going to be talking about my 10 favorite holiday albums of the 2010s. Yes, it's not the holidays. I only listen to holiday music during the holiday season, but I figured if I've gone this far, I might as well throw in the holiday music as well. It's like, why leave that out, right? If, if I'd had the foresight, I probably would have done it when I did my holiday now and then video back in December, but no, better late than never, right? Anyway, for the soundtracks and compilations uh, lists in this video, I will be giving you one honorable mention in each category. But I thought, well, in the interests of expanding the list to 12 to uh, honor the 12 days of Christmas, I would get that I would give you two honorable mentions for the list of holiday albums. So let's just dip right into that list. My favorite holiday albums of the 2010s. First honorable mention is A Family Christmas by the Piano Guys. Uh, this one, I believe this one, if I remember correctly, was in my sister's uh, CD collection. And I've liked these guys from the beginning, I'll be honest with you. Uh, their charming blend of pop and classical and sometimes even a little show tunes uh, in these beautiful instrumental piano piano-based melodies, uh, med medleys, I guess I should say, is just endearing. It's just lovely, and I enjoy it uh, constantly. They're semi-regularly in my rotation, and when the holidays come around, uh, these guys are pretty much every year in my rotation. I've had this CD since 2015, so it's it's very a lot of fun. And uh, my second honorable mention is Wrapped in Red by Kelly Clarkson. Uh, yes, an American Idol. I'm uh, a fan of the American Idol franchise, and uh, not the hugest fan of Kelly Clarkson. She's not my favorite, but I enjoy her. I have uh, one of her studio albums, as well as her greatest hits. Actually, an import version of her greatest hits that has like three or four extra songs on it. Uh, and I also have, obviously, this Christmas album. I picked it up a couple years ago, and, you know, how can you not marvel at her voice, honestly. She's just got one of the best female voices ever. Uh, in some ways, I'm kind of surprised why I'm not uh, more of a fan of Kelly's than I am. But uh, yeah, two honorable mentions, uh, very worth uh, honorably mentioning. Yeah, that wasn't a clumsy segue at all, was it? Anyway, uh, into the list proper of my favorite holiday albums of the 2010s. Uh, first off, at number 10, we have Christmas with the Pupini Sisters. Now, these ladies are a uh, what they called a close harmony vocal group. Uh, these, this style was very popular back in the 40s and 50s. Uh, the Andrews sisters were pretty much the preeminent examples of that uh, during the, the genre's heyday. And these ladies just pay an absolutely perfect tribute to uh, that bygone era of music. I, I've loved them since they put out their first album. And of course, when they put out a holiday CD, I had to get it. So uh, yeah, just wonderful, charming music. Uh, Pretty much all the standards are on here. Just very, very beautiful holiday stuff. It's in my, well, pretty much all these on this list are in my regular rotation. Number nine is uh, another American Idol, actually. Uh, spoiler alert. It is Christmas with Scotty McCreary. And uh, he is another one. He is probably in my list of my 10 favorite American Idol alumni. Uh, just uh, He was just charming from the minute you saw him on the TV screen. Uh, just And just that deep, uh, beautiful, deep voice he has. It uh, just makes everything worth listening to, um, although I actually did not care a whole lot for his last studio album, sorry to say. Uh, and that was a disappointment also. I really wanted to like it. But uh, yeah, this is just a, a gorgeous Christmas album, I have to say. Just all sorts of, uh, pretty much all standards on this one as well. But uh, yeah, he, he couldn't do a better Christmas album if, uh, if he tried. So it's just very, very nice Christmas music as well. 
Number eight, this one was actually in my sister's collection, and I am so glad I uh, inherited it that way because I probably would have otherwise missed out on a very, very gorgeous, beautiful holiday album, A Christmas Cornucopia by Annie Lennox. This is just gorgeous. It's a little bit um, atypical for a Christmas album. It's got some uh, some very much older uh, Christmas hymns. Uh, I don't know if they're necessarily classified, classified as hymns, but in also some foreign language uh, songs. There's one of them. The, one of them on this album is in French, so it's 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 a little bit off the beaten path for a holiday album, but still very very much worth listening to. I just absolutely love this one. Thank you, Kimmy, as I can thank you for a few of these in the uh, in these various lists. Number seven is one that you may not have heard of, uh, an artist that I think I have mentioned a couple of times. I really need to kind of give him a proper spotlight and uh, talk about one one or more of his albums in depth. But uh, it's a guy by the name of Matt Wirtz. And uh, his Christmas album, Snow Globe, which he put out in, I believe, 2012. Uh, very, very nice. Uh, it's uh, pretty much a mixture of original songs as well as holiday standards. This guy is just great. Uh, his not-to-be-missed album, in my opinion, is called Everything In Between, and that was from 2004, I think it was. Fantastic pop rock album, and this one uh, is just uh, equally great. Uh, just a wonderful holiday album. As soon as I realized that Matt Wirtz had put out a, a Christmas album, it was like as soon as I saw it on the shelves, I had to grab it, so yeah. Number six is from a longtime favorite artist of mine, and uh, this one, uh, they actually have been around since the early 90s, I think 1990, I think, is when they started, uh, but this album was actually put out in 2010. It is Christmas in Harmony by Wilson Phillips, and these ladies' voices just blend together absolutely sublimely. Uh, it's, it is no wonder when you know that they are the children of uh, Brian Wilson and John Phillips from the Mamas and the Papas, and Brian Wilson from the Beach Boys. So yeah, Harmony is in their blood, and just gorgeous, gorgeous vocals, and I believe all standards on this album as well. Wonderful, fantastic album from one of the most gorgeous, golden-voiced harmony groups of all time. Fantastic. Down to the top five. Number five in my pick is Christmas, the Deluxe Edition by Pentatonix. Uh, I, I really enjoy these, this group. Uh, fantastic acapella stuff. I've always had a soft spot for acapella music. And uh, they have put out uh, Pentatonix, if you're not uh, on top of them, they have put out just about as many holiday albums as they've put out regular studio albums. So, uh, and this is, but this is my favorite of the bunch. I actually don't have their third one. I only have their first two, and this is by far the superior one. Uh, just a couple of great. Uh, they they feature the Manhattan Transfer as guest vocalists on on one song, White Christmas, and uh, Jennifer Hudson is on another song on here, and just uh, yeah, just a bunch of great songs. I couldn't pick out favorites on most of these albums if I tried. Just uh, yeah. I mean, if you're aware of Pentatonix and what great uh, vocalists they are, you can't pass up this album if you don't have it yet. So, wonderful. Number four is a uh, favorite artist of mine from the 2010s, and I will be talking about my favorite artists uh, in tomorrow's video, I believe. But yeah, this uh, as was another one that as soon as I realized she put out a Christmas album, I could not uh, wait to pick it up. Casey Musgraves, A Very Casey Christmas. Don't you love the title? Uh, it's just a fantastic album. Uh, again, as is as are all these uh, holiday albums, uh, Willie Nelson, Leon Bridges uh, are just two of the featured artists on this. Just fantastic. I mean, as if her vocals and instrumentals weren't good enough, she kind of slathers on, well, lightly slathers on the guest appearances on this album. And, you know, one great song after another. What can I say? She's, she's wonderful. And uh, number three on my list is one that I talked about in my Now and Then video for the holiday season, so that kind of gives it away if you uh, remember that video. It is Moonlight Mistletoe and You by Keb Mo. And uh, just about the only reason this one isn't higher in my countdown, honestly, because I love it so much, is because it uh, doesn't have any, I believe, uh, er, um, uh, standard tunes on it. It's, it's all original compositions by Kebmo. Not that they're not fantastic. I mean, they're excellent, wonderful compositions. It's just, you know, I like to have some classic uh, standard tunes on my holiday albums. Just, you know, that, that's just me. But yeah, just for whatever it might be lacking in traditional classic holiday, t holiday tunes, he just piles on the charm on this album. It's just wonderful. And then go watch my uh, Holiday Now and Then video for more details on that album. It's wonderful. Now, the runner-up for my favorite holiday album of the 2010s is another one of my favorite artists, and that kind of go goes without saying with most of the artists uh, in this list. 
It is Holiday for Swing by Seth MacFarlane. I mean, this guy's just got talent out the back end. I mean, his voice is just absolutely gorgeous. Uh, he is up there on par with Frank Sinatra and Michael Buble and all the other great uh, traditional uh, style vocalists. And he, he does these Christmas songs justice. I believe they're all um, traditional tunes. And the guest appearances on here, again, uh, Nora Jones and Sarah Bareilles guest on this album. It's just, it's just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous music. Uh, it's one of my favorite holiday albums ever and obviously one of my favorite of the 2010s. So that leads us to my number one favorite holiday album of the 2010s. Probably a bit of a cliched choice, uh, maybe an easy one, but honestly, it's just... It wins out, in my opinion, completely justified at the top of my countdown. It is Christmas by Michael Buble. What can I say? I mean, the guy's voice is timeless, uh, as I, I just mentioned him, compared him to uh, Seth MacFarlane, but yes, uh, Michael Buble is just fantastic, one of the preeminent traditional style vocalists out there, and he absolutely does more than justice to these uh, holiday tunes, just wonderful stuff. And again, a couple of guest appearances, the Pupini Sisters on one track on the uh, standard edition of this, and this is actually the deluxe edition, and they are on a uh, one of the uh, songs on the deluxe portion of this disc, so they actually feature on two tracks on this album. And oh, who else is on here? I cannot read uh, the fine print on there, but uh, anyway... Trust me when I say it is number one on my favorite holiday albums of 2010s for a reason. So yeah, if you haven't listened to it by now, which you probably have, and you like holiday music, give it a spin. You've got to. You're going to love it. Okay now, still got a lot of ground to cover in this video, so let's just move right on into the next list. My favorite soundtrack releases of the 2010s. Uh, a couple of notes though before I get into the actual list. Uh, this list will include both song compilation soundtracks as well as instrumental and orchestral scores. I didn't want to make separate lists for the two categories, I just lumped them all together. And also, the movie or TV show to which the soundtrack belongs didn't necessarily have to have been released in the 2010s, but the title, in other words the album, must not have been previously released commercially in that same configuration, in other words, with the same track list or on the same format as the original recording. And also, uh, I was tempted to include multi-disc sets, but I am limiting this list as well as my compilation list to uh, albums containing no more than two discs. So there were lots of four, three and four and five discs uh, sets that I could have included on this list, but I figure we got to level the playing field a little bit at least here, right? And I decided to include just one honorable mention in each of these two lists. Um, first of all, the honorable mention in my soundtracks of the decade list is Star Trek Beyond by Michael Giacchino. Now, it doesn't happen very often anymore that the music in a movie catches my ear right away. Uh, because movies are so fast-paced now that there isn't really any time for for there to be nice, you know, grand orchestral uh, symphonies or, you know, you know, themes in the movies. They just move so fast that the uh, cues in the soundtracks, the scores, are usually really short and stuff. But uh, the exception uh, in this case was Star Trek Beyond. It had a couple of great gorgeous suites uh, in, the, in the movie. Uh, you know, gave the movie a little bit of time to breathe, and so that's what caught my ear about the music in Star Trek Beyond instantly. A very, very good soundtrack. Uh, one of the few orchestral soundtracks to have caught my ears in recent movies. So yeah, very, very worthy of an honorable mention. Number 10 in my list is a song-based soundtrack. It is Guardians of the Galaxy Awesome Mix Volume 1. Uh, yes, I just, I absolutely loved uh, the, the mix of mostly off-the-beaten-path tunes. I mean, there were some mostly popular songs in here, but there were a couple of them that were kind of choices out of left field, and that's, that kept it interesting. And of course, you know, the way it tied into the movie, I mean, hey, a sci-fi movie is uh, it's gonna usually catch my interest, not quite as much as it did when I was a kid, but especially if the plot is tied into music in some way, it's gonna be a winner with me, and uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, the first film, was definitely that for me. So yeah, a wonderful and very, very enjoyable soundtrack. Number nine is this a TV soundtrack. It's actually a two-disc set. It is from the Seth MacFarlane series, The Orville. I, as soon as I heard the main title theme in the first episode of The Orville, I was waiting for the soundtrack. And uh, yes, it, it's another one of those things, kind of like Star Trek Beyond, is that uh, in this TV show, uh, every once in a while, the action pauses and gives uh, the composers of the show time to put in a nice, lush, beautiful theme, or orchestrated theme, and there were some pretty darn awesome, bombastic action cues in the show 
the f first season of the show as well. So, yes, this is a two-disc set. As, as I said, it covers the entire first season of the series. Not all of the music in every episode of the first season, but the highlights. And uh, yeah, definitely it was worth the wait and worth the money. Wonderful soundtrack. Number eight on my list is uh, one of the re-releases, as I was mentioning in the notes before the list. And this one... I'm kind of cheating in here because I think it may have been available in this format, but only as a strictly limited edition several years ago. And that's another thing is I'm not sure if it was during the 2010s or it might have been in the previous decade. So, uh, but anyway, it is Dave Grusin's score to The Goonies. Uh, I talked about this in my what was it, my vacation recap video in at the end of September, I think it was, where uh, I had been waiting. This was a score that I had been waiting for for years and years to come out. I was not able to get uh, my hands on the limited ed edition until it was uh, on the aftermarket and ridiculous overpriced. I was wonderfully, uh, uh, absolutely delighted when it came out as a standard issue edition. Wonderful score. It's one of my favorite movies from when I was a kid, uh, if I didn't say that already. Yeah, so fantastic score. As much fun as the movie is to watch. Uh, number seven is actually the only vinyl LP on my list. Store exclusives are kind of a gray area. I don't know if I really wanted to include them on the list because they're more hard to come by than the regular uh, mass market releases, I guess you'd call them. But this one I enjoyed so much I had to put it on the list, and it's one of my favorite TV shows currently running. It is the Goldbergs Mixtape Volume 1. It is, uh, yeah, the, the show during the first couple of seasons had music tie-ins. Uh, the, the daughter was uh, trying to make a, a career for herself as a singer, and of course uh, Barry was is uh, Big Tasty, a, a wannabe rapper, so they gave uh, no shortage of, ch of chances to inject original music into the various episodes. And uh, this album features a lot of those uh, songs, often funny, hilarious songs that uh, are not meant to be taken seriously at all. But a, I, I love the show, what can I say? And this album was well worth the wait. This is actually, as I was talking about uh, store exclusives, this was an FYE store exclusive, uh, available only on vinyl, pretty much why I got, why I have it on vinyl and not on CD. Uh, although it did, it did kind of push me into buying a little more vinyl and, you know, starting to let go of CDs as I've, uh, I'm planning to do uh, in this new decade. So, yeah. Look up my uh, favorite TV shows and their soundtracks video from uh, earlier this year. Uh, I go into a little bit more t detail on it there, but yeah. Number six on my list is kind of a sort of a companion piece to The Goonies. It is another uh, soundtrack from a movie from the past, although this edition was not put out for commercial release until this uh, past year, 2019 actually. So it does qualify for my list for the decade. And it also was a movie that was put out, I believe, in, oh, not the same year, it was the year before Goonies. It is Ghostbusters. Yes, the song-based soundtrack was available from day one, from as soon as the movie came out, and it was actually put out in a slightly expanded edition last decade, in 2005, I think it was. But the score for the movie was not put out in a uh, mass available edition until last year. Uh, Elmer Bernstein did the score for this movie. Wonderful. Uh, a, another one of my favorite movies from the 80s, from my childhood. Fantastic, and it was uh, long-awaited and well worth the wait. Number five in my list of favorite soundtracks of the 2010s is a song-based soundtrack, and it is from a TV series, one of my favorite TV series of the decade, and it will sadly be ending its run whenever the next season premieres. It has probably been delayed uh, in production like everything else has been lately. But anyway, yes, Shameless. Yeah, the show is just wonderful. It's not the kind of a show that I would uh, ordinarily be into. Uh, but yeah, it's just a wonderful, uh, wonderful show, fantastic acting. And uh, the soundtrack is full of uh, lots of unsigned and independent indie rock and pop artists. Uh, a lot of great, great music on here that you will not hear anywhere else except on independent or, uh, in some cases, even self-released albums. Uh, the soundtrack for the show in more recent seasons has gone a little bit more mainstream. They featured uh, Fits in the Tantrums on uh, one episode not too long ago. But yeah, this is from the, the golden age of the show, I guess, when uh, almost all the, sound, the songs you heard on the show were independent uh, indie rock and pop bands. So yeah, excellent soundtrack. Pick it up if you like indie rock music that you're uh, not likely to hear anywhere else. Number four on my list of favorite soundtrack albums of the 2010s is from what might quite possibly be my favorite movie of the 2010s. I don't watch a huge amount of movies. Uh, I'm not a huge, huge movie buff, but this movie just absolutely stole my heart, and uh, this album was in my favorite albums of 2018, as you can go back and check out the video. It is Love, Simon, uh, the song-based soundtrack from Love, Simon, 
and it introduced me to a few uh, artists and songs that I have grown to love. One of my favorite Christmas songs of all time I discovered on this album, Someday at Christmas by the Jackson 5, as well as a couple of artists. Um, the 1975, I had tried the 1975 before, but they didn't click until I heard their song on this album, as well as, of course, Bleachers. Uh, Jack Antonoff of Bleachers is the executive producer of the soundtrack, and uh, uh, the album features no fewer than three Bleachers tunes, one of which is exclusive to the soundtrack, the other two from Bleachers' debut album, Strange Desire, which I ended up uh, getting turned on to from this album. So it's another, another reason why I love this soundtrack album so much, and I love the movie a whole lot more than that. So yeah, love, Simon. The soundtrack is my number four favorite soundtrack album of the 2010s. Number three on my list is another orchestral score album and uh, another soundtrack from a, uh, a movie from my past, from my childhood, as was the case with Ghostbusters and the Goonies. And this one is The Black Hole, uh, scored by John Barry, who actually passed away during the 2010s and was more famous for the James Bond film scores. Yes, this was originally only available on an LP until 2011, I believe, is when this was released in a greatly expanded edition. Uh, this is uh, probably twice the length of the original soundtrack album, so that's one reason why it is most definitely eligible for this list. A lot of music on here that was never released before. So this is one of the few albums lately that I, when I picked it up, I had been waiting for it for so, so very long. It was one that I just sat in my chair, put it on, and put my headphones on and just listened to it. Didn't do anything else, just uh, closed my eyes through a lot of it just to bathe in the uh, the music that I had never heard on cl crisp, clean digital uh, CD audio before. So yeah, it was so much, you know, as with a lot of these others, was well, well worth the wait. I, I would have waited another five, ten years for it if I'd knew, known that it was going to be so good. So yeah, The Black Hole by John Barry is number three on my list. The runner-up in my favorite soundtracks of the 2010s, list uh, was actually my number one favorite album of uh, its year, 2018, I believe it was. It is Baby Driver, the soundtrack from the action film of, uh, it's a fantastic action film. If, you, if you've not seen it yet, you've got to see it. And uh, I don't even like car chase movies or caper movies, and I loved this movie partly because it is so seamlessly edited in with the music. I mean, you cannot take the music out of this movie. It would lose so much without the music in it. And again, this is just one of those albums that has not just mainstream and well-known songs, but a lot of weird, obscure, off-the-beaten-path stuff. And it's just the the whole album is... You won't get bored listening to this album, even over its entire two discs. It's just fantastic. Every bit as good as the movie. It's just fantastic. I can't say enough good things about the thing. I, I used the word fantastic, what, three or four times already? And it's just wonderful. A wonderful album. Very deservingly at number two on my list. But there is one that was better than that, I felt, and it is, yeah, my number one favorite soundtrack album of the 2010s. This movie, uh, I was late coming to this movie by a, a few years, I think, and uh, it just totally won me over as soon as I saw it. It is Sing Street. Yes, if you have not seen this movie, you have got to. It is a wonderful and charming movie, and the soundtrack is every bit as good. It, it is a mixture of uh, classic songs from the 80s. The movie takes place in the 80s. And uh, yeah, those songs are actually interspersed with uh, songs by the fictional band featured in the movie, a band called Sing Street. The, the band that these school kids uh, start up, they try to go through various different styles uh, of, you know, the uh, new romantic like Duran Duran and then uh, The Cure and just all these different phases that they go through in a very short period of time. And the songs, the moods of the songs echo that. And it's just, it's just a fantastic movie. I hope I didn't spoil too much by talking about it. But yeah, it is a movie that is not to be missed, and it is, well, very deservingly my favorite soundtrack album of the 2010s. Okay, and now we have arrived at the final list in today's video, my favorite compilation releases of the 2010s. Uh, now, a couple of quick notes on this list as well. Uh, as with my soundtracks list, this list contains no release that is longer than two discs. And also, I've decided to include on this list both various artist compilations, which is the more common category, as well as greatest hits packages by a single artist. Possibly fudging the lines a little bit, but hey, it's my list, so meh. But anyway, uh, and as with my uh, soundtracks list, there is one honorable mention, and so let's do that one. The honorable mention for favorite compilation releases is... Stone Cold Yesterday, the best of the Connells. Now, the Connells was a uh, rock band from the uh, 
mid 80s to late 90s. Uh, one of my favorite bands growing up when I was a kid, uh, just a fantastic uh, college rock band, so to speak, out of uh, North Carolina. Fantastic stuff. Their albums, studio albums, went out of print ages and ages ago, and uh, the Bicycle Recording Company uh, label decided to take the initiative and released a best of compilation. I was kind of hoping they would follow it up with the uh, individual album re-releases, but it hasn't happened, at least not yet. But uh, I mean, yes, I have all of these, uh, all the albums that these songs are off of anyway, but I decided just to support, support the cause, if you will, I had to pick this one up. So yeah, a great uh, recognition of a favorite band of mine from the past that uh, pretty much doesn't get any recognition anymore. And now onto the list proper of favorite compilations of the 2010s. First one is The Muppets, The Green Album. This is number 10 on my list. And uh, this one caught my eye because it is uh, a covers album of songs made popular on The Muppet Show and in The Muppet, Muppet Movies by contemporary artists uh, such as The Fray, Weezer, and Haley Williams collaborate on one song on here, uh, The Rainbow Connection. You gotta love that. OK Go, My Morning Jacket, Sondra Lerche, which was a big selling point for this one. And uh, so, yeah, Matt Nathanson, Rachel Yamagata, you get the idea. Just a bunch of great uh, contemporary and recent artists doing their versions of songs made famous on The Muppet Show and in The Muppet Movies. So, yeah, a wonderful and very, very enjoyable compilation. Number nine on my list uh, could almost qualify as a soundtrack album, but it's not. It's, it's original compositions made exclusively for this album based off of Star Wars. It is called Star Wars Headspace. And this is a set of uh, electronica and techno compositions with, uh, and the thing running through this is uh, they use a lot of sound bites from the Star Wars movies, from uh, you know the, the the Ben Burt library of Star Wars sound effects, and all sorts of stuff. Uh, Cascade, Roixop, Rick Rubin, Flying Lotus, Galantis, and a whole bunch of other uh, artists. Uh, those are the most well-known artists on this compilation. A lot of uh, lesser-known artists, but. If you're a Star Wars nut like I am, you would find a lot of stuff to enjoy in this if, if you happen to have missed it when it came out. So yeah, very enjoyable compilation. Star Wars Headspace. Number eight on my list is a Greatest Hits compilation by a single artist. And uh, I have not taken the initiative yet to really collect this guy's studio albums. I've been thinking about it for years. I actually do have one of them on vinyl. But uh, yeah, I, when I saw this come out, uh, I just had to pick it up. It is a comprehensive two-disc set of Phil Collins' The Singles. And yeah, it's just, yeah, as I said, he, he had so many great, great hits from the 80s. I, I don't know why I haven't collected his individual albums yet, since he's just got so many great hits. But yeah, as I said, it's a two-disc set, so it's probably the most comprehensive Phil Collins set uh, ever issued thus far. Uh, yeah, his only previous hits album, I think, was just one disc. So, And yeah, this one kicks right off with Easy Lover, his duet with Philip Bailey, one of my favorite songs from the 80s of all time. So yeah, I absolutely had to pick this up, one up when it dropped. Uh, number seven is another Greatest Hits compilation and another two-disc set uh, from a slightly more recent act. It is The Essential In Sync. And yes, I have all of their individual studio albums, but the thing with this one is they actually loaded this one up pretty well with some uh, B-sides and non-album tracks that you can't get anywhere on any other U.S. releases. So if you're a big In Sync fan, check this one out. Uh, there you'll find a lot of treasures and interesting uh, oddball songs on it that are, you know, a couple of soundtrack hits. The one, he did, the one that he did with, with Phil Collins, actually. Uh, and another one he did with Alabama, or one they did with Alabama. So yeah, just a lot of odd stuff on here. Remixes that you won't find anywhere else. So yeah, that's one reason why this one ranks highly on my list. And one reason why I have it I keep it in spite of also having all of their studio albums. So yeah, check out the Essential In Sync if you're a big In, big in Sync fan. Uh, it's not to be missed. Number six in my favorite compilations of the 2010s is Dr. Demento Covered in Punk. Yes, this is a two-disc set again, and uh, the Dr. Demento show was a radio show whose uh, heyday was back in the 70s and 80s. Novelty songs, uh, comedic songs and sketches, a lot of interesting stuff, and the scheme with this album was uh, some of the all-time greatest hits from the Dr. Demento, sh Demento show covered by punk artists. And uh, although, although one of the artists featured on here is Weird Al Yankovic, he actually does a cover of a punk song, so he kind of flips the formula. But yeah, all the other ones, just yeah, just a great, great array of uh, interesting stuff. And I actually got Dr. D's signature on this from a launch and listening party and a sign signing with Dr. Demento and the album's producer, uh, John Cafiero. Very nice and very gracious, and uh, 
I will treasure this one for quite a while, not just because of the songs, but because of the memories attached to the release. Getting to finally see Dr. D in person. Number five on my list, we're in the top five, is a Greatest Hits compilation and, again, another two-disc set. And this is a guy that I mentioned uh, recently. I did a uh, review of one of his, uh, his most recent album in a recent video. It is Jake Shimabukuro. He is a ukulele artist, and when I use the word artist, I don't just mean, you know, he's a music artist. He is a true artist of the ukulele. I mean, you just think that the ukulele is a very two-dimensional instrument. Just listen to some of, some of the stuff this guy does with the ukulele. It will blow your mind. And yes, this is actually a Japanese release, uh, two discs. Yeah, it's singles from his uh, first ten years in uh uh, music in recording. Ukulele X is the name of it. X signifying 10 years. So yeah, wonderful, wonderful compilation, and uh, it just makes me appreciate him even more. I, I do have a, a couple of them from before this, you know, the Who's Who singles are included in this, but a couple of albums also from since, after this uh, was released. So yeah, it's easy to underestimate him, uh, partially because of his signature instrument, the ukulele. So wonderful artist. Number four on my list is uh, another two-disc set and another single artist compilation. And this is, uh, it's kind of cheating because he is a, a very uh, old, uh, you know, early artist. Uh, this is from the early days of rock and roll, but this was released in 2013. It is Jerry Lee Lewis's The Essential Sun Sessions. So yeah, this was never released in this format. That's why it is eligible for this list, in my opinion. But yeah, how can you go wrong with Jerry Lee Lewis? Some of the signature songs from uh, the early days of rock and roll. Yeah, a whole lot of shaking going on. Uh, great Balls of Fire. Just you know, And that's just the very, very beginning. Uh, yeah, 40 of his greatest hits. You just, you cannot go wrong with the classics like Jerry Lee Lewis. Just fantastic. And uh, a well-earned spot at number four on my list. My number three favorite compilation of the 2010s is uh, kind of like Jerry Lee Lewis. He's a classic artist from uh, the early days. This is from, I believe, the 60s is primarily when this artist was active. He's a progenitor of Weird Al Yankovic, basically. Tom Lehrer, uh, the Tom Lehrer collection. And uh, the thing with this guy is his lyrics were so brainy and so intelligent, they really made you think. If you want uh, satire and novelty songs that really make you think and are just incredibly clever, check out Tom Lehrer. Uh, he, he'll make the cerebral side of you laugh and let out a chuckle. Just fantastic stuff. And the DVD includes uh, a concert from, of all places, Oslo, Norway from 1967, which I actually have owned this for quite a while, but I have not watched the DVD yet. I've got to do that. But uh, yeah, Tom Lehrer is just, uh, you know, from my experience with the Dr. Demento show, I uh, got into Tom Lehrer many, many years ago, and just he's just fantastically clever with his lyrics, and just, yeah, stuff that uh, you, you sometimes you have to listen to his songs more than once to really get some of the, uh, the stuff, to absorb it uh, really a second time. So yeah, a wonderful... Uh, artist and uh, fantastic uh, release from, I think that was put out in 2010. Uh, number two on my list, the runner-up for favorite compilation album of the 2010s, is another very recent artist from the 2000s, and uh, this is a another two-disc set. And as I said, the two-disc sets are uh, uh, running rampant in this uh, list here. It is Memory Lane, the best of McFly, and this is the two-disc deluxe edition. Uh, they did put out a one-disc standard edition, and yeah, this has not just their big hit singles. I am actually, I, there's one album, possibly two albums of theirs that I don't have, but this album also is loaded up with B-sides and demo recordings and covers, uh, a couple of remixes also, I think, so. And if you have not, if you don't have experience with McFly, check them out. They are just so great. They were kind of kooky and monkeys-ish in their on their first album, but then they really, really grew into their own and some of the best songwriting from, you know, people under the age of 21. At least I think they were under the age of 21 when they did their first two, possibly three albums that uh, uh, I've ever seen. So yeah, just yeah, give McFly a try if you have not yet. They're uh, underestimated as a teen pop group. They're, they deserve so much more recognition than that. Now, my number one favorite compilation album of the 2010s. Now, I'm actually cheating here. Uh, this is a tie. I consider this a tie between two albums, but in a way, this is a two-album set. It's just they were released individually, but they were released, I believe, on the same day, back in 2018, and they both have the same theme. It's just uh, two different genre approaches. This is Revamp and Restoration. Uh, these are two albums celebrating, uh, reimagining the songs of Elton John and Bernie Taupin. 
and uh, Restoration is possibly Edges Out Revamp as my favorite because this actually um, does songs from a country perspective, which, you know, go figure, I was not into country uh, until just a couple of years ago, but and this ends up being my favorite of the two, uh, just very, very slightly. But yeah, I could not leave Revamp off the list. Uh, just, I mean, an all-star array of artists on this album, uh, on both of these albums, Florence and the Machine, Ed Sheeran, Alessia Cara, Coldplay, Sam Smith, Miley Cyrus actually appears on both of these uh, albums, Leanne Womack, Chris Stapleton, Casey Musgraves, Dolly Parton, Marin Morris. I mean, the list goes on and on. These are just fantastic albums. What really brings out the appreciation for Elton John uh, on these albums is how easily the songs translate from one genre to another, especially as, you know, as is another reason why the country album just barely out uh, outshines the pop album, in my, in, in my opinion. It's just they translate so easily and elegantly and beautifully to the country genre. It's just, you know, but both of these albums, I can't have one without the other. So Restoration and Revamp tie for number one for my favorite compilation albums of the 2010s. Oh, that was exhausting. Yeah, three lists. I hope this video doesn't end up being too long. I, I think I might have run off at the mouth a little bit too much on these lists, but I hope you stuck with me through the whole thing, and I hope you enjoyed these lists, and that I hope you are enjoying my end of the decade spectacular-ish. But anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Suggestions, questions, constructive criticisms, lay them on me in the comment section below. Also, scroll down to the description for the link to my Twitter feed, as well as the links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos, and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.